And here's the lecture I want to, I want you to give to them. So the Sheikh, he picked, he picked my topic for me. That never happens. I always pick my own topic. But I said, no problem, Sheikh. No problem. So before we begin my topic, I want you guys to know a little bit about my history. So when I'm usually delivering the Jummah Khutbah, I don't go by my kunya Abu Shahada. I go by my laqab Khatib Ibn Stanley. So Stanley, unfortunately, he died upon Kufr. I gave him down for a long time. But there's some things that I learned from Stanley that has to do with the topic that we're talking about today that was hand-picked for me by the Sheikh. The Sheikh wanted us to talk about accountability. Accountability. Now my father, Stanley, he only had a grade 9 education. He only completed grade 9. And my father used to run the streets and what was considered back in those days Black Spadina. So the black people were in the Spadina area before the Chinese came for almost 70 years. And then the Chinese came and they bought everything up and now it's Chinese Spadina. So he ran the streets with some of my older cousins and the things that they did in the streets aren't worth mentioning. But then my father, Stanley, he met a very beautiful woman, my mother. He fell in love and she said, I don't want you hanging out in the streets anymore. If you want to be with me, you got to make more money, clean money, good money. So my father, he started working at the LCBO. Anybody know what the LCBO is? Anybody know what the LCBO is? The Liquor Control Board of Ontario. He started mopping the washroom, cleaning the toilets, and he went from the very bottom all the way to the top to my father became a forensic auditor. Anybody knows what an auditor is? What's an auditor? What do they do? What do they do exactly? They check the accounts. They check the accounts. They check the merchandise. They check the cash flow and lack of the cash flow. Not only was my dad an accountant, my dad was a forensic accountant for the government of Canada with a grade nine education. My dad was number smart. He wasn't book smart. He wasn't a person who liked to read a lot, but he was really good with numbers. And on the weekend, he used to try to take his knowledge of some numbers and go down to the racetrack and bet on number three and number four to try to get a bigger score. My dad used to go to the racetrack and bet with his father and my cousins and my uncles and his friends. He used to waste a lot of money on feeding the horses. And there are some times where we only got a chance to eat some bologna because Pop spent money on the pony. <laughs> so this is the introduction to my lecture. Now my father, he taught me to try to count money. So for instance, my dad at a very young age, he would tell us the price of something and then he would say, here's 20 bucks, here's 40 bucks, here's 50 bucks, now make the change in your head. No calculator. And usually when I go to the store and they say $18.24, so then I'm like, okay, six, what did I say, 18.24? Yeah, 18.74? 24? Okay, so six, we round it off to 30 plus 70, so it's $1.76, is that correct? So I would make the numbers in my head and I would tell the cashier before they punched it in. Before they punched it in, they round it up and then they punch it in and it tells how much money. So my dad always said, focus on the money. Don't focus on the awards. Don't focus on the points. This is how my father raised me. Keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the hole. 
So what does this got to do with our topic? The topic which is chosen for me is the topic of self-evaluation, self-introspection, what is known as mahasaba and nafs. The nafs is what? What is the nafs? What is the nafs? Desire. Desire? No? Soul? Ah, the soul. Where's the soul? Is the soul out here? Where's the soul? The soul's in here? The soul's in my pocket? Where's the soul? It's inside? What color is the soul? How big is the soul? How large is the soul? Can anybody describe the soul? Nobody knows what the soul is. We call Allah Ta'ala, Allah the Most High, went on to say, and this is one of the first or second ayat I heard when I became Muslim, the Jumu Khutbah of one of my sheikhs. He quoted one ayah, and then this is the second ayah. Ya ayyuladina amu taqwulla wa tandur nafsu ma qaddama li ghad wa taqwulla inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalun. Very powerful ayah back then, 32 years ago. Still a very relevant ayah today. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> Anybody know who Pop Smoke is? Put up your hand, you know who Pop Smoke is. Anybody know who Takashi 6 9 is? Anybody know who Kendrick Lamar is? Okay, these are all the latest rappers the last couple of years. I don't even know the new ones now. Now the raps that they were saying at that time, these guys were getting paid millions of dollars and there's millions of views on their videos. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years go by, these guys are forgotten. There were songs that I grew up on that are forgotten now. But here's the thing, this ayah that I'm reading right now, it's like I just plucked it out of the Quran and it's fresh again, once again. And there's something to unpack from it. Oh, you have Iman. What's Iman? Okay, define it for me. What is Iman? I, I did it three times here. I explained what Iman is three times here. Three times I came to this masjid and I explained it. This is something that the new Muslims, what we study. I didn't memorize the Quran. I'm not a great speaker of the Arabic language. But we study Usul al-Din and I'tiqad al-Din. We study the Aqidah and we study the Usul. I said three times I came here. What is Iman? What is the scholastic meaning of Iman? I'm asking you guys questions. All you guys are born Muslim. I want to see what you know. And I ask Aluk. Tafadl. To believe in Allah. Okay, what else? Okay, that's called Arkan al Iman. What is Arkan al Iman? What's Arkan al Iman? All you guys learned this in a little book when you were young kids. You could rattle it off like this. Once I start it, you guys will know it. What is it? Amna billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa yawm al-akhir wa qadrihi wa khayrihi wa sharrihi wa murri then what comes next abah ba ba we all memorize this i'm not asking about the arcana iman i'm asking what is iman what is ahl al-arab where are my arab brothers all the Arab brothers, what is what is Iman? I need more. Zid zid. When you believe, the Iman sees that Okay. We should not define Iman what we think it is. We should define it the way the scholars a thousand years ago, how they defined it. And what they said was this. They said, Qawlul bin said. وَتَصْدِيقًا بِالْقَلْبِ وَأَمْلَ بِالْجَوَارِ Iman it is a statement, a pronouncement on the tongue. أَمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ It is a belief, iqrar or tasdiq. It is firmly fixed in the heart and it is actions upon the limbs. So they shortly they say it, قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلًا وَأَعْتِقَادًا That's what the scholars say. Okay? إِلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ It's so important. So Allah says, oh, you have Iman. Iman means you have to believe it, say it on your tongue, believe it firmly in your heart, and act according to it. So anytime you read the ayah, Ya ladina amanu, there's three top teeth, the scholars have said, belief, statement on the tongue, Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. This is 
Amr al-Lisan, statement on the tongue. It is a belief that is firmly fixed in the heart, and you have to practice la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. You have to practice it. So, all you believe, fear Allah. Now, this is interesting. <clears throat> when, as a new Muslim, we're learning the Arabic language, the word taqwa, they translate that as the fear of Allah. Is that true? Is it true? They also translate al khawf, the fear of Allah. They also translate al khashya as the fear of Allah. It shows you how diminutive the English language is. How could three words be translated as fear and they all mean three different things? Taqwa, khawf, and khashya. Anybody can unpack that for me? Okay, I want to make the class a little bit more sweeter today. <clears throat> I have a fresh $10 bill here. $10. Fresh $10 bill. Now you guys are paying attention. Look, some people stood up. Oh, $10. Oh, wow. They're paying us to learn Islam at the masjid. They should pay you guys more to come. You know? When you guys go to university and all these other schools, you have to pay them. Now we're paying you to learn Islam. $10 donation right here for the people can answer. Okay. So what is taqwa? What is al khawf and what is al khashya? Define those for me, please. Taqwa is Allah is looking at you, Allah is seeking you. Okay. So every action should be. How do the scholars define it? It's not how we define it. Al taqwa, fi'l al ma'bur wa taqwa al ma'bur. You understand that? It means the close to what you said. It is staying away from the things that Allah told us to stay away from and doing the things Allah told us to do. This is taqwa. Or as they used to say, when you're walking, it's as if you're walking on eggs, eggshells, or on rose thorns. You have to be really careful. You're going to get stung. Al-Khawf. What is Al-Khawf? Sisters, I hope you're paying attention. Khawf. What is Khawf? Fear of like punishment? No. It's different. Okay, but there's different types of khawf. If right now a pit bull came in here, a pit bull, anybody know what a pit bull is? And it's foul in the mouth. <laughs> right? Are we allowed to be scared? Yes or no? Yes, this is khawf. This is being afraid. If somebody, Audi Bilala, some of Allah came in here with a gun, are we allowed to be afraid? This is the type of khawf. Okay, but now the issue is al khashya. What is al khashya? Okay, it's the ultimate fear of Allah. So much so that Allah said, What did He say about the mountain? And Allah showing Himself to the mountain. What's the ayah share? Who can give me the ayah? Khashya'an mutasaddi'an min. Ah. If Allah revealed his essence or his light to the mountains, it, what would it do to the mountains? It would rip it asunder out of the fear of Allah. So when you see the word fear in English, you got to sit and say, what is the, what they call it, the maqsood minhu? What's the intended meaning? That's why you have to study every single word in the Quran because it's jam-packed with information. Allah Ta'ala says, Oh, you have Iman, fear Allah, and let every soul look to see what it has prepared for tomorrow. Does it just mean tomorrow, the next day? What does this tomorrow mean? The Akhirah. Al Yomul Qiyamah. Al Hisab. Al Qabr. Anybody who dies today, may Allah make everybody live a long time. The Qiyamah starts. Right after the angel comes and takes your qiyamah has started. And fear Allah, Allah says it again. Indeed, Allah, He is well aware, He is acquainted with what you do. All of us are sinners. I don't know anybody in North America, I don't know anybody in North America that's a bigger sinner than me. I am the biggest sinner. That's what I believe. 
and I need to make Toba to Allah, Toba yesterday, Toba right now, stuck for Allah to be like, and if Allah gives me life, Toba tomorrow. This is how the Muslim should be in a continuous state of making Toba what is Tighfa. And fear Allah, indeed, Allah is equated with all that you do. So, the title of my lecture, the Sheikh he gave me, Hasubu an Fusakum Qabla an Tuhasubu. This was sent to me at 3 o'clock this morning. This is your lecture. I'm like, okay, Sheikh. <laughs> so, who said this statement? It's a very famous statement. Who said this statement? Omar. Who? Omar al ah, anhu. The champion of Islam. The second Khalifa. You know, Omar al Khattab, he said some very powerful things. And if you were to study the Prophet's life, his seerah, you would learn so many things. Who here has read the seerah of the Prophet? Any seerahs? No one read the seerah of the Prophet. I read it three times. I love the Prophet. Who is more better? Muhammad ibn Abdullah or Abu Qasim? Who's better? Who should we follow? Muhammad ibn Abdullah or Abu Qasim? Huh? Who should we follow? Abu Qasim or Sadiq al Masduq? Huh? Huh? Ah. Who should we follow? As Sadiq al Masduq or Al Amin? These are the titles of the Prophet. And I remember I gave a lecture a long time ago, like my Sheikh gave a lecture. And there used to be a video about Michael Jordan 30 years ago. I think I said it here last time. Be like Mike. Shoot like Mike. Dunk, dunk like Mike. Dribble the ball like Mike. Be like Mike. It was a very famous commercial. So my sheikh, he gave a lecture called Be Like Mustafa. His whole lecture, Be Like Mustafa. Act like Mustafa. Talk like Mustafa. Pray like Mustafa. I'm a khtar. The chosen ones, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Muslims came to my sheikh and they said, who is Mustafa? Who is that? How can the Muslims not know the chosen one, one of the Prophet's names? It shows you that we got a long way to go. So Umar al-Khattab, he has great qualities. And be, who is the best Muslim after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq Radiallahu Anhu. Then who? Then Omar. This is the taqdeem of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah. We put Abu Bakr, then Omar, then Uthman, then Ali Radiallahu Anhu Ajma'in. We have no shame about that. So Omar Radiallahu Anhu, he was told that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi had a very special trustee named Al Hudayfa. What's so special about Hudayfa? He's the keeper of secrets. Very good. So, what secret did the Prophet tell Hudayfa? All the name of the hypocrites, the munafiqeen. The Prophet told Al Hudayfa all the names of the hypocrites. So, when Omar became the Khalifa after the death and the demise of Omar and the Prophet Sallam. He grabbed Hudayfa. And he said, I am Amir Mu'mineen. I command you to tell me the names of the hypocrites because you wanted to deal with them. Hudayfa said, I'm sworn to secrecy to the Prophet Sallam's secrets. I swore secrecy. And then here's the most amazing thing, brothers. When I read this 30 years ago, I put down the book. It shook me. Omar said, okay. Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he list me and name me as one of the hypocrites? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he say that Omar is one of the hypocrites? Even though he's from the Ashima Bashirin, those that have been given the glad tidings, of paradise, he was still in a state of khawf. He was scared that maybe he fell into something called an nifaq. He was scared. 
So he said this very famous statement. Just to show you the caliber of his thinking. He was a genius up here. And before he became Muslim, what was Omar al Khattab? What did he do? What did he do before Islam? He used to watch over the camels. And what he learned from the camels is that the camels, even though you look at them, they all have different personalities. This helped him being a great governor. Some of the camels, they may poo on you. Some of the camels, they may pee on you. Some of the camels, they may spit on you. Some of the camels, they may hit you. Some of the camels, they may kick you. So at a very young age, he learned how to tend and be a shepherd of the camels. So he said, this very profound statement, hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable and weigh your deeds before they are weighed for you. It will be easy for you tomorrow, the day of judgment, should you evaluate yourself today. Take account of yourself today and be prepared. Something called istadad. Very powerful word. We should be making istadad for the month of Ramadan. We should be getting prepared for Ramadan. For verily there will be a great assembly on the day when all things will be revealed and nothing will be hidden. Omar, where's Omar? Who's your brother? It's Omar, right? That's his name, right? Yes. Where's Omar? Omar ran away. Bilal, let me ask you a question. How many, and I, I don't know if your mom is there, how many cookies have you stolen when you never got permission to eat them? How many? Lots, right? We're going to see you on the day of judgment. It's that scary, guys. It's that scary. It's that scary. I don't want to scare you guys that much. So the self-assessment, inshallah, we'll try to make it a little bit quicker. The self-assessment or the self-evaluation is an act of progress. So here's my question, guys. Has anybody here went to school before? Anybody went to school? You ever went to school, Shake? Shake, nobody here? Nobody went to school? You went to school, Sheikh? You never went to school? Ever? Huh? Anybody went to school? Any sisters you guys went to school? Okay. There's something called the quizzes, and then there's something called the tests, and then there's something called the examination. Who here loves these? Put up your hand. No one loves an exam. No one loves a pop quiz. No one loves a test. Why? Why we don't love those things? We're not prepared or we have to prepare. Either we're not prepared or we have to prepare. What happens if you don't pass the test? You fail. What else? Maybe. What else? Okay, let... Oh. You got, mashallah, two out of a hundred. You're smart like a donkey. <laughs> Nobody wants to be a fool. That's why you got to stay in school. <laughs> so, one of the things, brothers, that the scholars have said, and I want to try to make it really quick. We don't want to go too long. There's a lot of information, and I don't want to bore you guys, man. Because I didn't come here to lecture, I came here to spend time with you guys. Number one, the purpose of self-evaluation self is number one, something called islah. What's islah? Self-correction, reformation. You yourself trying to make reformation or where else have we seen this? Inna al-mu'minuna ikhwa fa aslihu bayna akhawaykum. 
The believers are brothers. So together, come together and make reconciliation, islah, between your brothers. So one brother is upset with another brother and sometimes it gets really bad because money is involved or some other types of stuff is involved, property is involved. And Muslims, unfortunately, they've gotten to fights over things. So what does Allah say? Barely the believers, the brothers and sisters. So try to come together and make reconciliation. Try to sort out the matter, correct it. Why you got to correct the matter? Why is it better to correct it here in this dunya? Say it again. Ah, so let's just say, Alhamdulillah, the brother, he owes me some money. Because I'm not going to owe him no money. He's going to owe me some money. <laughs> Try not to get into debt. It's not good. Now, the brother said he's going to pay me money, but he never paid me. And I got debt. So now I get upset. And now I say to the brother, come on, man. I need my money, brother. What are you doing? And the brother says, oh, next year I'll pay you. So brother, you said you're going to pay me this week. So now we get into a little argument. And now we start pushing each other. And now it gets into a fight. Now the police come. Now charges. Now maybe we have to go to court. It can get messy. But now what if the imam comes? And with some respected people that everybody respects and say, okay, let's sit down and figure out how we can make a reform and correct the situation. Is that important? What about our sins? What about our bad actions? Our bad deeds? Some of the young Muslim boys, ah, ma, clean up later, mom. Ah, sit down, mom. Idris, ya ummik, ya ummi. There's youth that speak and say bad words to their mom. I know it's not the imam's kids because they can get a corrected. They get corrected real quick by their uncles. You can make some uh, reconciliation. Is that right? You've seen that happen, right? Okay, alhamdulillah. The imam's got backup, right? The next one is ihsan. Improvement in excellence. Improvement. Who here needs to improve upon themselves? These brothers they didn't put up their hands. No hands. These guys they never put up their hands. These sisters they didn't put up their hands. They don't need to improve. All of us can improve, guys. I'm the first one. I know I need to improve. I'm a bad Muslim. I really believe that. When I listen to my sheikhs and I listen to the lectures and they talk about the good deeds of their sheikhs and the people who died a thousand years ago, I'm like, I don't even know if I'm Muslim or not, sometimes. I listen to them and I'm like, am I even a Muslim? I don't know. I disobey Allah so much. I'm not a good Muslim. I'm not doing enough for Islam. The next one is itqan. Enhancing the quality of your work to obtain the most perfect, 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 perfect example. Itqan is over ihsan. Mutqin. Okay, so some of our brothers, they come from a certain country where there's these buildings like this. Okay? Ahlam. Is that how you say pyramids? Huh? Ihram. Ihram. Some say that our Egyptian brothers, not all, they have itqan in the tilawah. Egyptians are known for the kira'ah. Not all, but mashallah. They usually win a lot of competitions. So we need to have precision and our oath and our own self-evaluation. So we need to have iman and ihsan and itqan. So Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, inshallah Ta'ala, we're trying to unpack it. Allah says, as Allah says, Inna sa'yukum yashakta. Indeed, your Lord, efforts are diverse. Wa anna laysa al-insan illa ma sa'a. And that there is not for man except of the good with which he or she strives. So we have to strive, try harder to become better Muslims. Now, I think I said it before, inshallah ta'ala, we're almost over. Some of my friends, mashallah, their bodies are bigger and stronger than mine right now. But 20, 30 years ago, their bodies weren't stronger than mine. So they got big, strong bodies, but their minds became weak. I used to have a big strong body, but now my mind is strong. The best is to have a strong body and a strong mind. Agree to that? Okay. So, we're going to end it with this, inshallah ta'ala.
Yes. Yes. You're strong, you man. We're going to end it with this. And then that's it. The Prophet Sallallahu went on to say, and this hadith is in Imam Turmidi, where the Prophet went on to say, Ightanam khamsin qabla khams, shababaka qabla harmak, wa sihhatak qabla saqamak, wa gara'ik qabla faghrak, wa faraghak qabla shughlak, wa hayatik qabla mawtik. Anybody heard this hadith before? Put up your hand and heard this hadith before. You heard this hadith before, bro? You heard it before. Everyone heard this hadith. Who heard this hadith? Okay, here's the thing, guys. You might have listened to this hadith before, but did your heart hear it? This is where our ummah is right now, guys. We've heard a lot of things. We heard a lot of verses of the Quran. We heard a lot of stories. We heard a lot of things. But did our heart hear it? If our heart heard it, then our heart would practice it. Agree to that? Who agrees to that? Okay. Shalom, this is it. The Prophet went on to say, it is very powerful. And this is the end of the lecture here. Take advantage of five things before five things. You heard this hadith now, brother? Your youth before you grow old. So, look here. Come up here, Bilal. Come up here, Bilal, for a second. Look here. I got I to gotta pick up Bilal a little bit here. Come up here. Now, Bilal is a young man. I've known him for a long time. Now, Bilal here, he has a little muscle here. Mashallah. It's pretty good. And his brother's got maybe a little bit bigger muscle, right? Now, there was a time when these guys didn't have any muscles, right? Now, his brother was acting up last year, and he was behaving bad and, and giving his mom and his sister a hard time, right? And within one second, your brother got defeated by me, right? Do I got a lot of muscles? Do I have a lot of muscles? Yes. No, I don't. I got, I got one power muscle right here. Okay, your brother, he has lots of six power muscles there, right? But how can a six power muscle lose to a six, uh, how can a six power muscle lose to a one power muscle? How? Technique. Technique, what else? No? What else? Wisdom. What else? I, I fought a thousand fights. You guys never fought a thousand? Ah, I split my head open playing hockey right here. 37 stitches. You can see my bone busted in my head. I've had my tooth knocked out playing hockey. I'm a general. I've been war tested. Right? This guy here, right here, this guy here. This guy here was talking smack last year and he lost him in one minute. Is that true? That's true. It's true. What? He's doing all these push ups and he's very strong. He's mashallah, very confident. And he got dusted in one minute, right? Is that true? Okay, sit down, Sheikh. Here's the thing, guys. I gotta get scary for you guys for a second. Then we'll come back to the hadith. There's someone called Malik al Mot. He's an angel that Allah, as a wajel, has given him the power, by Allah's permission, to take the souls. He's never lost a fight. And this Malik al Mot is even going to take the soul of Angel Jibreel. So, your youth before you grow old. I'm getting old now. I got lots of gray hair in my beard. That means I made, it's not wisdom, it's lots of mistakes. I've made lots of mistakes. So I learned from them. Your health before you get sick. As I'm getting old, I can remember the times when I used to make fun of my grandfather, both grandfathers, both grandmothers, <coughs> my father and my mom. Ah, your leg doesn't hurt. You look fine to me. They said, no, no, no. I have a very big pain in my knee. What kind of pains do old people get in their knee? Arthritis. I started getting arthritis in my knees because I had an ACL tear and an MCL tear. When it rains really hard outside, I get pain in my shoulders and my back from all the hockey injuries. Okay? As I'm getting older now. Before I felt indestructible, bigger and stronger than both of you guys, okay? When I was young, 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 playing hockey, okay? But now I'm old. So now I'm supposed to think more. Think more. This is the strongest muscle that you guys have. But also there's a muscle in here you gotta make strong too. It's called the heart. Your leisure time before you become busy. 
What does leisure time mean? Okay, see my sister here, she's having a great time now, right? Soon she's going to have to start doing homework, right? About five, ten years, she's like, oh, I got to do a math test, I got to do a homework. Right now she's having the time of life, just running around. She don't know responsibility. In 20 years, she's going to have to pay some bills. Don't we all wish that we were her running around, not giving a care about life, right? Who wishes they could be young again? Ah. But see, when you become her age... You're gonna, she, I bet you she wishes she was 10 years old. Right? When she's 10, she wishes you were 15 years old. And when you're 15, you wish you were 20 years old. And when you're 20, you wish you were 30 years old. And then when you turn 40, you wish you were back 30 years old again. <laughs> your life... Sorry. Your money before you become poor. Before Islam... I used to work at the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. My dad got me a job there. When I became Muslim, I went to college and I had on a little white topi with our Pakistani brothers wear that little white topi. And I met a Muslim brother. And as I'm going to college, he seen me and he gave me salam, salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Seen him a couple of days later, salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. The third time, brother, what's your name? Abdul Shaheed. What's your name? Jame. MashaAllah. How are you, brother? He asked me. He said, Brother, what are you studying here? I said, Public Relations. I'm a public relations co college dropout. I dropped out of college. I dropped out of college. Am I still in public relations? Yes or no? I'm still in public relations. I don't have any degree. I just have a pedigree. You guys understand that? If Allah wants you to do something, you're meant to do it, whether you have a degree or not. My dad became a forensic auditor and he doesn't he never had a degree in accounting. Which is written is written. So your life before your the last one is uh, your richness before you um, yeah, your money before you become poor, your leisure before you become busy, and your life before your death. Who here has been watching TikTok for the last few weeks? I'm going to ask again. Who here has been watching TikTok videos, good and bad, the last few weeks? Very sad stuff. There comes a time I have to put down the phone. I can't look anymore. I look and I stuff for Allah. Allah must add. Allah help them. Allah aid them. I can't look anymore. Death. Anybody know where they're going to die? Anybody know when they're going to die? Anybody know how old they're going to be when they die? Any know, anybody know what land they're going to be in when they die? Anybody know? Nobody knows, right? So from the time that you're born to the time that you die, that's all the time you have in your life to worship Allah with Joe and to be a good Muslim. Now, the lecture is over, but I want to make one more point. Recently, a good friend of mine, really good friend of mine, two people in his intimate circle committed suicide. They gave up on life. They gave up on life. My best friend, his father committed, his father-in-law committed suicide, and his daughter was supposed to marry a Muslim brother and the marriage didn't go through, he committed suicide. That's not the way we want to go. Life is worth living, guys. Don't lose hope in Allah's Jal. You have one life to live. You know, the, the non-Muslims, they call it YOLO. You only live once. So they took that concept and they use it in the haram way. They go and they rob, they steal, they cheat. They do things they shouldn't do. They drink, they do drugs. They spend inappropriate relationships with people. And they say, yo, that's the YOLO, man. You only live once, but you only die once too. Life is not a video game where you can just reset when you're losing. You gotta get back up and you gotta try better 
with that هذا ما إندي وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Did anybody learn anything in this lecture today? The sisters didn't learn anything. This, the sisters cook good food, so maybe they're tired from cooking all day. May Allah reward the sisters and bless them. May Allah reward them for cooking all the delicious food. I'm going to make lots of dua for the sisters for cooking the food. And may Allah reward all the husbands who bought the food. Or the sisters who bought the food and fed us. Anybody thinks that we should come back here again? Okay. No, not every Friday. No, no, I can't. I have a life, brother. <laughs> I got to do some good deeds before I die. And one of the good deeds that I got to do is I got to spend time with my wife, my kids, my mother. But then there's times that I got to spend time with who? Me. I got to spend time with me. Shouldn't I do what I want to do? Okay. You know, what I, you know what I do when I'm bored? I watch basketball. I love basketball. I should have been a basketball coach. Any questions, guys? Before we end it, anybody have any questions? Any sisters have any questions? Yeah, Sheikhna. Uh, can you expand a bit more on the wealth before you become poor? Because I don't think you touched upon that point. Well, I mean, it's not it's like a expansion, but like you have some more issues. So you get to on that. Anybody who's been a multi-millionaire before? Anybody been a multi-thousandaire before? Anybody been a multi five dollar guy before? Okay, money comes and money goes, right? Like this five, this ten dollar here was available, but nobody wanted it. So guess what? It gets to go back into my pocket, right? So money is a tool, guys. Money is a tool. Money should be in our pocket to use to do different things. We got to build a masjid. We got to give charity. We got to pay rent. We got to give sadaqah, we got to put gas in the car, but this tool here, never ever let it go into your heart. Let it stay, let it let, get lots of this and put it in the pocket, in the pocket, but don't ever let it consume you that you only live your life for this. There's people that they live for this, this thing right here. Can you do that? What's your name? Aya. Her name is Aya? Aya? Salaam alaikum. Alayah Fadaha. May Allah preserve her. Yeah, so money comes and money goes. And money is a tool. This masjid, could this masjid function without money? How did you guys get here? Did you walk on shoes or you came on, on rubber? You came on rubber heels or rubber wheels? Rubber wheels. That costs money, right? Okay, doing dawah is that free or that costs money? Ah, sometimes it's free. Sometimes it's free. Dawah is free, but time is expensive. That's a hadith we just said. Time is expensive, right? Okay, what about those Qurans? Those were free, or someone had to print them? It costs money, right? This microphone, right? This table. All this stuff is helping with the dial. Right now I'm taping a lecture, okay, on my phone. Was that for free or you, ha you had to pay for this stuff? Right, so money is a tool that if we use it, it becomes, and there's some brothers that they consider this a bid'ah. The microphone. There's brothers that said, ah, brother, this is a bid'ah. I said, no, brother, it's not a bid'ah. The scholars, they call this al-maslaha al-mursalah. It is a community benefit that helps the community. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, did they have a microphone? Did they have speakers? Did they have lights? Did they have carpets? Did they have toilet paper? Did they have the stinger bottles? Uh, maybe they did. Did they have running water? Did they have cars? Did they have helicopters? Did they have boats? Yes, they had boats in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Yes, they did. They had boats before that. Prophet Nuh, he had a boat, right? The Safina, right? <laughs> yes. So things are meant for us to use. Why? Why did Allah give us all this stuff for? For what? Socks. We have socks. What's the what's the usage of socks? 
to make life easier. Why? So we can be comfortable while we worship Allah. Is it winter time now? Almost, right? So does the rent and the hydro go up or down in the winter time? You sure? What about when it's hot in the summer? We don't use air conditioning? Does it go up or down? Ah, tricky question. You see that? Now, normally in the winter, it goes up higher. It's, it, it, to, to heat the house usually costs more money. But if we get a lot of hot days, then it costs a lot of money. Any more questions? No more questions? Sisters got questions? You have a question? You have a question? I bored you guys that much, eh? The people from Mississauga, we're boring. Shout out, we won't come back again. I'll give you one more story. On the way up here today, there was a guy who was right like this, on me like this, for about 40 kilometers. And I'm slowing down because there's fog patches, and I'm slowing down because there's twists in the road. And as soon as he could get a little bit of space, he went around me. And guess what? By the time we got up to the light, there was two places to park. I parked right beside him. So he was impatient, and we ended up side by side. I took my time. I was relaxed. I was making dhikr. I was making dua. I was chill. And he's... Red light, you gotta wait. Many of us, we're not happy with our lives. We're not. Many Muslims, they want more from their life, which is okay. Rabbina, atina, fi dunya, hasnatan, waqina, adab nar. La tansa, nusibaka, mina dunya. But alhamdulillah, there's also something called al qada'a. What's qada'a? Contentment of the heart. Okay? Now, this is just a side story. I was with an imam the other day and we met four brothers that got divorced in the last six months. I was so sad because some of them are my friends. And I asked, I only heard the brother's side of the story. I never heard the sister's side. So you have to be fair and hear both sides of the story. But all the brothers said, brother, I've worked so much years. COVID hit. I lost my company. I lost money. I lost my investment. I lost my cash stash. Things have been so tough. My wife, she wants to divorce me or she divorced me or she's trying to get a divorce. The brothers still want to work. They're still trying to work. But life hit them so hard. And I wish I could talk to our sisters and brothers and tell them that we have it easy, man. Our life is easy. When I turn on TikTok and I see that the Muslims don't even have in some places, and it's not just Palestine only, some Muslims, they don't even have a bottle of water, sisters. Sisters, you're not paying attention. Sisters, you're not paying attention. Sisters, you're not paying attention. Some Muslims, they don't even have this right now, which you consider insignificant, how much would this cost if I went to the store? Dollar, dollar fifty. Some Muslims don't have one clean bottle of water, not even a bottle of water, a clean bottle of water to go bismillah. Some Muslims, they don't have that. Who here ate a beautiful dinner tonight? Who here had some bread today? Who had bread? Just bread. Who ate some of the bread today? Anybody had any of the bread? Some Muslims, they don't have bread. Just bread and water. Who here had rice? Plain white rice today. Some Muslims, they don't even have plain white rice. Who here had chicken today? Who had chicken? Anybody had chicken today? I don't, you know any brothers? You never ate chicken? You guys don't like chicken? The jaja. Huh? Birdie. We call it birdie in my culture. The dirty bird. Okay, I was blessed today, alhamdulillah, I got three different types of chicken and they're all delicious. 
Some Muslims, they don't have that. So when you compare our life to their life, why are we complaining? Why? MashaAllah, she can run around freely, alhamdulillah, and have a good time. What's her name? Farah. 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 So mashallah, in other places the Muslim kids can't even run around. They're not safe. We should be so grateful for Allah. Last question. Then I have one question for you guys. Last question. No? Okay, here's my question. Who here loves me? Put up your hand. Some brothers, they don't love me. Some brothers, they don't love me. Love me for Allah. Okay, guys, check it out. Alhamdulillah, we had some new Muslims embrace Islam recently. And we work with those new Muslims. Alhamdulillah, we had a few recently take their shahada. After reading about the Muslim suffering in the Muslim countries, there was a challenge to read the Quran, and they started reading the Quran. And we had a chance to interact with a few people. And alhamdulillah, we were able, to, with Allah's permission, to encourage them to embrace Islam. So in Etobicoke, we have a new Muslim program for new Muslims. We teach them how to pray. We get some books for them. We spend some time with them. And this is something that not people, not everybody specializes in that. I specialize in working with the new Muslims. I'm not half of the Quran. I am not a muhaddith. I didn't memorize a lot of hadith. I'm not from the Nahween. I'm not an Arabic grammatist. But I specialize in working with the new Muslims. Who here thinks that's important? Okay. So I need your help today, guys. In the back there, I brought some of my clothing line. It's called Strictly Sunnah. And we're asking the brothers to, inshallah ta'ala, support our project. And we'll give you a nice gift, inshallah ta'ala. And those funds will be towards the new Muslim Dawah project. Because what happens is, is a photo op. People, they get Jessica and Paul, come on up. And then they take a picture, mashallah, Jessica became Muslim, everybody, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Give her a samosa. Give her some tahini. Allah Akbar. Islam is the truth. Two years go by, and they don't get taught Islam properly. Guess who the sin falls on? Not on me. Because if I get a hold of them, I'm going to try to teach them Islam. Who does the sin fall upon? One person or the whole community? Huh? Yeah, so it seems as though, and this is just my opinion, that we don't put enough effort into educating the new Muslims. We don't spend enough time walking them into Islam. Guys, let me tell you, I have a hardcore Christian anti. Okay? And when I first became Muslim, I was struggling financially. You know what she said to me? Oh, baby, baby, Jesus loves you. Why don't you come to the church, baby? And we'll get you a new car. And we'll help you out. And we'll put some cash in your hand. Just come to the church because Jesus loves you. I said, no, Auntie, thank you very kindly. My faith meant more to me than that. But imagine. Imagine. There are people out there that are leaving Islam. And let me ask you guys a question. And that's it. I'm done. The propagation of Christianity in this land compared to the Islamic propagation, who's higher? Who spends more money propagating the religion? The Muslims or the Christians? Huh? Who agrees that the Christians spend more money teaching their religion and promoting their religion? Who agrees to that? Brother, you don't agree? You do or you don't? Chef, you agree? These brothers say they don't agree. You guys think that the Muslims spend more money teaching Islam? How many television networks do we have teaching Islam? How many radio networks? How many newspapers do we have? How many advertisements do we have? So are we winning or losing? 
So with that, هذا ما إندي وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد. I'll be back there where the shoes are. You can look for me there. جزاك الله خير. جزاك الله خير. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.